The 1969 Ford Torino Cobra coming up next on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Hello once again Blue Oval fans and welcome back to another great Ford video in our amazing lineup of 1969 Fords. So today we're going to take a look at a really cool 4-in-1 model kit from AMT Ertl. Now this thing is stock custom and it has a NASCAR feature as well as drag racing. So it's a really cool kit and you don't want to miss this amazing review. And if you love all our reviews, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because every week I am making a new model car unboxing video and I don't want you to miss it out. So if you pound that notification bell, you will get notice from YouTube that I made a brand new video. So, like I said, this kit has been out for a couple of years, so let's take a look at some of those great box arts before we actually take the lid off of this baby. NASCAR competition was getting pretty hot, especially in 1969 when new developments in aerodynamics and technology for motors was coming into the fore. Ford's answer to the NASCAR Oval Challenge was to build more aerodynamic cars like this 1969 Ford Torino Cobra. What made this car special was of course the sloping roof line and powerful motor under the hood. However, in NASCAR, it was a rule that the manufacturers had to make at least 500 street production version cars of these very crazy oval track racers. So the Ford Torino Cobra is one such vehicle. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at AMT's rendition of this kit. There are two boxes of this era. One is this version, came out in 2002 with the wavy lines in it. And the other is the version where this same model kit is on a street scene. And there's another one in here where it's on a checkerboard backdrop. That was a Walmart special. So if you find any of those three kits, they're all the same car. <laughs> the initial release of this tool came out in 1968 and was reboxed in 69. Took a big hiatus up until 1990 when there was an addition with the yellow car and then one that came out with the red car in the same year. Then we jump another 12 years forward to these versions for 2002. Anyway, this car came out under the RC banner. And, whoops, I'll just turn it up this way on the side of the box. And you can see some of the nice detail in here from the AMT model kit builders. I got the interior in here, the engine under the hood, and of course the side profile of the car as well as the three-quarter shot here. Let's back in this up a little bit. And turn it on the side of the box. You can, of course, see the front car on there. And then on this side, again, we get the same photos of the model. Skill level 2 kit, ages 10 and up, requires glue and paint. And again, that side's the same as that. So let's just tear the lid off. <laughs> there we go. And now we can see inside with our instruction sheet. <clears throat> we got glass in the bag, decal sheet. Then we've got our chrome, glorious chrome. All the great components are in one box here, or bag, pardon me, yeah, right there. And then there's our body, and then our wheels. You get a lot of tires in this. You got four for NASCAR and the four regular for the street. And then there's our box, nice and empty. So I'll just clear this thing out of the way and we'll be back in a moment to view the plastic components. Welcome back, model kit builders. I got jumped ahead of myself a little. I said the plastic parts are next, but of course we have to check out our instruction sheet first. So just zooming back here, we have a multi-fold out piece of paper. 
you get a nice photographic image of our Ford 1969 Cobra down here. And then up top it's got, of course, everything you need to know about this Ford. Including the fact that it had the King Kong 428 cubic inch V8. It was a fair lane originally. And they added this fastback roof onto it. So, very cool stuff. There's your standard, here's how to build the kit, and the building tips down here. And of course we have the Racing Champion logo here. So this is 2002 RC Ertl, uh, which of course now the company is round two. And as you can see there's a lot of panels. This folds out into a big map, three pages wide. And you gotta love the first panel. Such a big space, such a little picture. All right, but what we'll do is we'll zoom in closer into this and have a look at all these little photos. Here we are with step number one, and I'm just gonna slide this across. So sub-assembly, 428 cubic inch V8 stock or street machine or NASCAR. Painting, engine transmission, Ford Blue, water pump, front cover, Ford Blue, and the oil filter is white. So sliding this across, there we go. Figure one is our engine. You get a right and left hand side. The transmission is on the back. Uh, the front water pump cover goes on there. Radiator surge tank location, C, figure eight. Interesting. And then we've got the oil filter going on to the side of the block. And then, slide across here, very cool. Note, see the back of decal sheet for application instructions. Caution, always work in a well-ventilated area. Recap paints, thinners, and cements between use. Never expose thinners and cements to an open flame. Important, paint and plating must be removed from glue joints before applying cement. So it's nice that they put this box right in there with the engine in that first step. So let's go see some of the other uh, panels here to see our options for this engine block. Engine option numeral uno. Final assembly, the 335 horsepower Cobra Jet. Now this would be the factory stock style engine option A. So you have a four barrel carburetor on this block. We've got a special Cobra Jet air cleaner, which I do believe is sort of a Ram air setup. The uh, decal on the top, your carburetor, your intake manifold, you have your left and right hand valve covers, your cylinder heads, the exhaust manifolds, all gluing onto that block that you made earlier, a distributor of course, the belts, the alternator, and the fan. And then after all that's together you have your stock Cobra Jet, 335 horsepower. Final assembly street machine, figure 2B. Or not to be? That is the question. <laughs> okay, anyway, this engine has the dual carburetor intake setup, and you've got your choice between velocity stacks or the actual Cobra Jet style dual quad air cleaner. So, before, have a plan in mind which engine you want to use, because this would be the upgraded uh, factory motor. Okay, so we got our velocity stacks or your air cleaner here going on to these dual carburetors these would be huge uh, four barrels uh, dual quad intake manifold gluing onto the top again our valve covers cylinder heads here you have high flow exhaust manifolds left and right the same alternator belt and fan assembly and the distributor of course going on there so you have your choice of either velocity stacks or that air cleaner. And finally, if you want to take your 428 cubic inch V8 racing, then here we get our final NASCAR assembly. It says, note, air cleaner shown for location only. Do not cement at this time. So you need to do this air cleaner after, at the very end of your uh, model car building assembly. So you have the special NASCAR air cleaner, which of course is extended and goes up into the firewall here. You got a, a, a dual or a single carburetor, pardon me, a four barrel. The intake manifold, drop on there. This is a 
do believe a high-rise intake manifold, a little bit different from the stock manifold of the 335 Cobra Jet. Then you get your cylinder heads and valve covers again. There's special NASCAR headers, which are more like that noodle type. You get a oil sump going on the bottom of your oil pan. So that would be for racing again. And then the belt of pulleys and the alternator and all that is basically stock. So then you got that big choice. So three engine choices to choose from out of the same engine. Since this model kit is a three-in-one, you do have a choice of two interiors. One is, of course, the stock Cobra Jet and Street Machine version, which we'll take a look at here. So we do have an interior tub, because keep in mind that this kit did come out in the late 60s, and that was standard procedure back then. Although, you do get a separate bench seat, which drops in here. You get seat backs and two bucket seats as well as the shift lever, the stock style instrument panel, which I always thought was cool because it has each of the four gauges up here actually molded into the dash, which is awesome. And then our factory stock steering wheel. So all these components pop together and you get that interior. And it says painting the assemble interior, except the shift lever. There's a parchment, which is off-white, white interior, black, red, blue, and green green. Those were the stock colors back in 69. Now we get into our NASCAR interior where of course here we have all the race ready stuff and the removal of some of the heavier parts mostly the seats and all that kind of jazz. <laughs> so here we've got our roll cage and this is a five or six piece is it? One, two, three, four, five piece assembled roll cage with the padding on it, of course, to protect the driver's head in case of collisions and whatnot on the track. Here we have a special racing bucket seat, which probably would have been fiberglass or something lightweight back in the day. And then the seat back glues onto there. The console has been uh, changed into this gigantic uh, metal style floor pan deal. Shift le lever goes into the top of it. You do get a different instrument panel here with flat gauges and then a another steering wheel going in there. And here you get your painting. It says assembled roll cages, gloss black, this assembled seat, steering wheel, console. All those are gloss black. The instrument panel is flat black and the interior itself is flat black. Of course, to black it out so when you look in from the windows, you don't see the interior panels. <laughs> because in NASCAR, they would remove those. The back seat, the bucket seats, because it's all weight. You know, the uh, factory bucket seats, of course, have the mechanisms to fold them up and down and all this kind of stuff. So that's all heavy. So again, the fiberglass bucket seat would lighten it up. Now we're getting into the chassis assembly. And this kit has a lot of different ways to build your chassis as we'll see as we move along here. So we do have the chassis, the stock version. This is the top of it. And here we see our assembled stock engine with the single four barrel going onto the chassis pan here. Then we've got our stock plated wheels going into the tires, a Polyglass GT L60-15 Goodyear tire. Anyway, that was a bias belted tire that came out in 1967, of course, as we learned last week. And then we've got our wheel back going in here. They have plastic rivets that pop in, so much like uh, the General Lee kits and the Dodge Chargers that I reviewed earlier in this series. Uh, our GT backs, again, the wheels are all shown here. There's a metal axle that goes through into the back. And once all this is together, that is how the top of the chassis looks. And once you finish with the top, you then turn your chassis upside down and you get the bottom. And here you're going to add on all the stock mufflers and exhaust pipes. These, of course, are hooking up to your headers. So you get, of course, your left and right with the muffler. And then these extensions slip sort of underneath that rear molded in rear axle. <laughs> so I guess it clicks on one side and glues on the other. We'll take a look at when we see our parts. And then you get the nice chromed exhaust extensions to pop on. So even though all this was molded as a single piece, at least AMT, whoever designed this back in the 60s, I guess, 
was considered enough to have separate exhaust pipes that popped into this with the uh, molded in rear axle. So you get sort of a combination of a you know regular promotional style pan under here with the addition of some detail parts which in this case are the mufflers. So let's see how else this is built. Now we get into our street machine or you know the Cobra Jet style and here you get your assembled street rod engine which will drop in on the chassis, the wheels go all together again, same tires, and the plastic rivets. So the same polyglass GT L60-15 Goodyear tires. Then all that goes together. Then we flip it over again, and the same muffler and tailpipe extensions go in. So the only difference between the street rod and the factory stock is, of course, the different engine, which is up there. <laughs> Now let's see what this looks like for NASCAR. So when you're out there on the NASCAR oval and you're racing against the infamous Dodge Daytona as well as the Chargers and everything else that's on that track, you of course need super stuff underneath. Heavy duty suspension and the whole thing just to catch up and beat the other cars. So of course here we have our chassis pan again and we're dropping in our assembled NASCAR super motor. And of course remember to leave that air cleaner off until the last. Then that would go in there, and here we get the alteration in our tires. We get the NASCAR deep dish wheels mounting on Goodyear Blue Streak Stock Car Special Racing Tires, all popping in. Of course, the same plastic rivet, because we don't want a gigantic metal axle going through our engine, <laughs> punching through the side and pouring oil all over the track. So we need our little plastic rivets in there. And that is the top of our NASCAR chassis once all the wheels and everything are dropped in place. And then when we turn our car over, of course, we don't want to be inhibited by the weight of all the mufflers and long tailpipes. So we instead add in these exhaust dumps, which just come right off our noodle uh, manifolds here and swing out to the sides of the car. And then we have a rear brake cooling ducts dropping in here to keep our brakes nice and cool off of those gigantic wheels. Our next panel is a body assembly and body interior part going together for the first time. <laughs> so this is for the stock street machine and NASCAR depending on the interior of course that you're putting in. So you get your body, there's a decal that goes on the top of the radiator, your front windshield, your rear window, and then, of course, your assembled interior of your choice pops in underneath. Next up, we continue with our body and chassis. So here, it says, note, NASCAR only, cement air cleaner to carburetor and firewall after body and chassis have been cemented together. So that was the previous step. Then, we have our stock street machine NASCAR. So this, all, this part here is all the same. There's our body popping onto our completed chassis of your, our choice here. And then the radiator surge tank will cement in here. Cement to radiator and water pump front cover. So I do believe that was only on the stock option in the street machine. I'm not sure if that's on the NASCAR, but anyway, that's when you put that in. Here we have our rear end assembly panel. And there's our body there for the Cobra. and you get a NASCAR spoiler and you can also use this on your street rod. This of course would be to deflect some of the air current so that uh, when you're going on the high speeds the air would come down the body and then deflect off of the spoiler instead of wrapping under here and creating drag. This of course would also push down on the rear axle so that you get better grip on the track. Uh, also the rear bumper for the streamliner would glue onto the sides here just to connect in and make this more aerodynamic at the back. Now there's our stock bumper and you get your tail lights which you can put through here for the stock and the street machine version or you can just leave those off and use the tail light covers onto the back here and then of course there's a decal that says remove the engraving off of the rear bumper and put your decal in place. Our final assembly pattern of course has the front end this is for stock street machine and NASCAR. So here we have our Cobra Jet scoop going on there, which of course is for stock only. This would hook up to that Ram Air style air cleaner. 
here we have a little square underneath the hood. It says remove this area for Street Machine version only. So that would be for those velocity stacks. Then here we have our front grill. And it uh, comes with the headlights molded in. Although you can use these NASCAR covers to cover over your headlights. And then there is a NASCAR grill that will pop in in place here. So these components here are just strictly for NASCAR. Again, headlights were heavy, so the covers would lighten it up. And then the grill, you need more air coming into the car, so you remove the factory little vents and nice bits in the grill and replace it with this wire mesh screen. So direct air current going right straight to the radiator instead of being kind of inhibited by the little grills and whatever from the stock version. And our final panel is this nice side view of the car with the application for the street machine decal application so these would be those stripes going along the side here and uh, decal number three and number two and four for the other side it says note apply the decals one at a time cut the desired decal from the decal sheet and dip it in a cup of warm water for a few moments to loosen the decal from the backing paper hold the decal in position and slide the backing paper off the decal Use a soft, damp cloth and press any water bubbles to the outer edges. That's basically how you do it. Stay tuned for a decal application video coming up sometime in the future on our Monster Hobbies Tips and Text section. And that completes our look at our instruction sheet for our 1969 Ford Cobra. And now let's have a look at this excellent body from AMT. And here we can see our Ford Torino. What's kind of cool is if you look under the hood, it actually has the shock towers molded in just the way they're supposed to be with the uh, shock absorber coming up on the top here for adjusting, which is pretty amazing. You get uh, the nice little grill in here with our wipers. And then as we turn it up on its side, there are some little vents in here. Unfortunately, you got to be careful because there is a seam line which goes like this and then down here. So if you are, you know, trying to sandpaper this, you could potentially lose these three little strips. So again, use your number 16 hobby blade and come up carefully on this angle like that. There's a section here you need to remove. This, of course, is to keep the very thin roof pillars from collapsing from, you know, AMT pulling it off the mold and whatnot. But uh, once these are gone, of course, you can have your windshield in here supporting the weight. You get a nice little Cobra emblem right here on the fenders, a little turn signal lamp over there, and another red indicator marker light here. Underneath, not any sync marks, which is nice. If you're a follower of my show here, you know that every time I turn this over, there's some sync mark under here in the roof. This one is in perfect shape. There are There's a little bit of uh, mold mess in here couple little dots and specks and whatnot which of course I don't know if you can can you see that there they are see right there you of course can take that out with a number 16 hobby blade just by moving it in the right way there's a couple little bumps on the top here I don't know if they need to come out or not uh, anyway this of course has sort of a screw mount in the front here for uh, mounting the front which is kind of unfortunate because now you could just glue it across and you wouldn't need these sort of cans in there. I, I don't know if you could try to take them out. There'd be a hole in there. Uh, it might be messy. <laughs> just leave them in. Firewall is kind of flat. Of course, this is sort of tub style, just a different way. It does have the uh, Ford windshield washer bag in here, which would have been better as a separate part because you're not going to carry a windshield washer bag around in NASCAR. So again, then you can't really chisel it out too well with a hobby knife because it's sunken in on this side. See, so if you were to cut that off, you'd have this big funny hole right there. Of course, you could always put a, a sheet of little styrene in there, a little square, but then uh, kind of odd. So just paint that over black, I guess. <laughs> you got your door handles molded in place and then across the back, you have Ford written in there with those big letters. First on race day <laughs> for your NASCAR. 
Anyway, that is basically the gigantic Ford Cobra streamlined body. Next up, I decided to take a look at our interior tub here, just quickly. And they, I, there's something weird with AMT back in this time frame, where uh, they always stuck the steering wheel in a plastic bag. I, I should ask Robert, my friend here, one day, why? <laughs> He used to, of course, work for AMT, and now he's working for Ravel. But, you know, and they always had a piece of tape in here, and the piece of tape left the residue in. It's, you can clean up that up with uh, some general purpose enamel paint thinner. So let's just get that out of the way for a minute. Take a look at the bucket here up close. So here you can see that there's some mold buttons in the bottom of our floor. There always seems to be in these kits of this era the uh, 60s molds. One, two, three, four in every corner. And as we saw in that Dodge Daytona video, they were like, you know, the concrete tiles you get at the uh, hardware store. They were really high in that thing. Anyway, we've got our, uh, our uh, clutch uh, brake and gas pedal molded into the floor. Get this nice little console molded in, which of course gets covered by that NASCAR thing, uh, the tunnel. And then now here you can see the detail on those inner door panels is very light. And that's the typical problem with these buckets. You can't get the high detail molding in here. However, I am doing a review of the monogram Talladega Ford. So you'll see the difference in that one. A uh, little bit of carpet molded in on the floors here. Underneath, a couple little holes there. I do believe you open those up with your drill for... Oh, no, you don't need to open them up. But that's where the, your roll bar would go in, which are, is, uh, these holes are conveniently covered once you get that bench seat in there, which we'll look at later. They do have these little kind of half-open hook things on the back here. There are some little bumps inside the body, which, of course, these would lock into, just so you don't push the interior too far back in your body. But that's your basic tub for this car. Now here's our chassis, which is our final part to this before we get into the details, the detail parts. And as you can see, we got the two little pins here which would go into those big posts underneath the front of the radiator. So I'm assuming that back in the early 60s when this kit first came out, these would have been holes in here. And then you would have put in those twist -to screw things that the AMT used to have and screw the front of this car straight up into the body. There are a lot of mold marks on here. I don't know if I don't think they're going to inhibit your interior at all. Maybe this one here. But, you know, just for good measure, take a little sandpaper and your number 16 hobby blade and just get rid of these things, especially up in here. Uh, the example has a, quite a bit of flash on it, as we'll see in a minute. Oh, and the, then the little handle here, which, of course, saw it off and clean up that edge. Turning it over, we get our details underneath here. There's our gas tank. The springs are all molded in, as well as the shocks and the rear axle. Actually, this is kind of interesting because uh, Ford here has the shocks at the front of this differential. And I know later on, Ford experimented by moving one of the shocks to the back. So you got one shock here and one shock there, or vice versa, depending on how it is. Ford guys would know. But yeah, these stag staggered shocks, which gave it a little more control in the back. And then when it came to NASCAR, I do believe they put four shocks in, two on each side, one in front, one behind, just for more uh, spring onto the back rear axles. So anyway, that's my little trivia. <laughs> you get sort of the back of the transmission molded in here, connected up to the drive shaft and into the rear axle. But of course, this being a pan, when you turn this up, you can see this is all one big solid thing. The springs don't look like springs, of course, and especially in here on this side. When you look at it, you can see it's just one big fat thing. Um, however, like I said, to uh, make this look somewhere decent in the middle, AMT did add in the separate exhaust pipes, so that would cover some of the sins of the high look under there. Anyway, up in the front, you just get the suspension cross here. There's no uh, linkages or anything. 
And then it's got the typical holes here for your peg. Now you want to get a file or something and file this nice and flush on this side so that it doesn't rub with the wheels, you know, interfere. Like there's some old mark there. You know, you don't want that there when you've got a wheel going on. And then of course in here it's all sunken and everything, which might be okay. But again, a little file going in there wouldn't hurt it at all. So not too bad. Oh yeah, see there's, th that would be a hole there, right? And there. Then the screw would go in. So that's all accommodating that kind of thing. Which would have been nice if they just had forgotten about that and glued it straight to the radiator and we would have had those nice bumper horns in. But, you know, what can you do back in 1968, right? So anyway, there is our chassis. Now we're getting into our engine details. So if you're going to build this kit, this is where you need to ask yourself the question, how am I going to build it? What style do I want? NASCAR, street machine, you name it. All right, so I'm going to get you guys in the comments down below to write in that if this was your model, what way do you want to build it? Stock, street machine, or NASCAR? And tell me why. Why do you like whatever you chose there? I kind of want to know and get your feedback here, so let's, let's do the questionnaire. <laughs> Fill up the questionnaire. Okay, anyway, so... On this parts tree we get all our engine components and on this one we get a few engine components as well as some suspension bits. And now here's an interesting addition. This is the extended nose for your Talladega. So if you want to get a sort of a bonus Talladega model out of here, just glue this to the front and do some body work. Okay, so let's just move our Talladega nose out of here. And take a look at the detail on the engine. This is quite a nicely detailed motor for what you're getting out of an old, old kit. There's some nice ribs on top of the transmission here. Oil pan and starter motor are all molded in, but this is really a highly detailed uh, version for back then. There's the intake manifold. There's our cylinder heads. The little, um, whoops, got up too high there. <laughs> There are intake manifold cylinder heads, a hose, there's our pulleys, you get the nice Ford battery, the front timing cover, a little thing here, I think that's, that, was that our oil filter? There's a little crossbar going on there, distributor, exhaust manifolds, there's the high rise intake manifold for NASCAR, then all our wheel backs, and the nice fan with the little rivets and everything in here. I do believe these are fiberglass fans. I read an old uh, car magazine about the advantage of the steel fan and the fiberglass fan. And then there's all our wheel backs. You know, the holes look like the same size in here, so I'm not sure which ones are for that plastic peg. You're going to have to try it out. Okay, now moving this out of the way, let's go take a look at some of these race components. There's the cooling for those rear brakes for the NASCAR version. There's our exhaust dumps going out the side. There's that little overflow water tank thing that Ford's had. There's our NASCAR air cleaner. Which is kind of interesting because it shows sort of two bumps here. You would assume it was two carburetors, but really there's one and then a, another bump back here. Uh, any of you guys that know this air cleaner from NASCAR, <laughs> write in the description down below how it worked. If you stumble across my video. And then there's our exhaust hitters there. And then, like I said, the Talladega nose. Let's just uh, check this out for a minute. Here's our body. See, now this would go in here. Just like that. And I do believe this actually has glue points on it to attach it in. Um, now... <laughs> This is, of course, better than that Daytona nose from the uh, that Dodge Daytona. And, of course, this is an aerodynamic nose. It drops that grill, the stock grill, down just a little bit, but allows more of a proper airflow attack to the front of the car in your NASCAR. So, again, there's all our components. Now we get into NASCAR components, primarily... Actually, I think entirely. All right, so here is how you speed up your car for NASCAR. And don't ask me what this funny thing is, because I don't know. 
There's one part on here that is not in the instructions, and that's it. Okay, so here we get our roll cage, left and right, and top and bottom. And uh, as you can see here, you've got a lot of padding in there. Pad it all the way down the side. So this, of course, is if you get into a side impact or whatever and the driver is jostled in there, he won't bash himself breaking ribs into metal bars. So they pad it with this stuff. Um, these, I, I think they might be window straps. I'm not sure. It's not really identified. Of course, if they are window straps, these go in on the back windows just so that the glass won't explode all over the place if it rolls or whatever. Um, okay, because, yeah, the back windows and that, it would all be plexiglass, I believe, to cut the weight down. There's our deep dish NASCAR wheels. I do believe these are deep dish wheel backs. Another piece of the roll bar. There's that um, transmission cover and stuff for the NASCAR version. You get the padded steering wheel on here, and this thing. <laughs> Free bonus thing. Uh, anyway, um, there's our seat back and our seat. These are little blanks for the rear bumper. For the NASCAR version, there's our spoiler, the back of the roll bar, and the other side of the roll bar, and another wheel. So let's just bring this up to the camera for a second here. See what I mean? Like this thing. I don't know what that is. Okay, so if you know what that is, write it in the comments down below and all that nice stuff. So yeah, there you go. Um, bunch of mold marks on this side, but this is going up in the interior, so you might not need to worry about it. Seam lines are running all over the place in these roll bars. It's a lot of detail work cleaning them up with your number 11 hobby blade with the pointed end. You have to scrape this way then turn it this way, and turn it the other way, and turn it that way, and turn it that way, and scrape, scrape, scrape. So what I do is, when I scrape these things, I go from, I'll do the top seam line down, the first pass, let's say, and then I'll turn it this way, and go this way, and then turn it, and then go the bottom one, and then turn it this way, and go the top, all the way around. So tops, uh, you know, front side, all front sides, bottom, all bottom, all back sides. And that's how I remember how to do these things. Okay, moving that out of the way, looking at this nice fiberglass style bucket seat. There are, there is the four point belt in here. Seat belt, it's kind of, it's molded in the back, you can see. It's a barely even visible, but if you can paint that thing, paint it a different color so it pops out, then uh, there's our spoiler, the seat back up here, little extensions to your exhaust, oh that's the rear exhaust pipes, uh, the back of the roll bar, the little padded thing, and of course our wheel, a nice uh, bolt pattern molded in here, on the back you can see how deep that is, on the back you want to sandpaper this down nice and flat. A couple of mold marks, but I do believe they're all hidden and they don't seem to inhibit anything. So basically there's all our race components. And here's the rest of all our gray parts. It's quite a mixed bag on the parts tree as to what's going on here. You got NASCAR parts, custom parts, everything all mixed together. So here we've got, this would be almost all stock except for the stock car wheel. <laughs> But this seat would, was over here. So you get your two bucket seats, your bench seat. Nice detail on this, nice and crisp. Seat backs are hood with the hood pins. Then on this parts tree you get those uh, headlight blanks for NASCAR. Oh, I hate you. So here we have a mixed bag of... Uh, Oh, I really hate that tick, 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 tick. Here's the rest of our model kit components. Here's the, here's the rest of our gray plastic components. And it's quite a mixed bag as to all the pieces that are going on here. You've got some of the custom, some of the NASCAR. It's a mixed bag. But anyway, we have our seats. And of course, this one would be molded on here. 
The nice detail in here, of course, because it's molded separately. There's the seat backs, the hood with the racing hood pins stuck in there, which of course is factory stock. And there's our stock deep dish racing wheel. On this parts tree you have the headlight blanks, as well as there's another intake manifold, another deep dish wheel, the license plates, and actually these are the taillight blanks, and I think this is the license plate. Then you get these little things, that one was old for there. Uh, there's our hood scoop for the stock version, our stock dashboard with those nice circular gauges molded in. Then we've got our flat NASCAR racing dashboard, of course made lighter. All this is heavy padding and all the rest. There's the pins for our front axles, the little grill insert for NASCAR. Not sure what these little guys are, gotta look it up on the instructions. There's the steering wheel that was in the bag, which is a good reproduction of the Ford steering wheel with the horn ring. And that's all the rest of those components. So let's just move some of this out of the way, get a slightly better look. See the nice uh, detail on these seats. They even have the buttons in the centers in the back. Nice tuck and roll kind of pattern on there. There's our hood with first on race day molded into the front. Underneath you get mold marks, no four corners. Luckily, these are sort of on those rails, so again, number 16 hobby blade, little file, get rid of them. There's a sunken in part here, and a little square. Now, I'm not sure what those were, maybe some of the features of earlier editions. Cut something out and then put some blower pipes in there or something, I don't know, intake velocity stacks, you know, whatever. But again, nice detail on those components. Let's move over to our dashboards here. So again, you've got the racing one. The gauges are a little bit muted in here, but maybe that's how it is with NASCAR. This would all be metal, I do believe. Special uh, dashboard made up. Maybe even aluminum. I don't know. NASCAR guys, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, there's the stock instrument panel, which again looks like a racing thing because of the gauges molded in right to the dashboard. Nicely done. Radio underneath, all that stuff. Glove box on that one. Uh, just going to bring up the stock steering wheel. This, of course, would go in just like that. I hate to say it, but these Ford steering wheels in this time frame are really boring. <laughs> Sorry, Ford guys. They're just so, ah, uh, you know, factory sleepiness. Like the same kind of wheel that would be in a big LTD or something, which would be okay there. But on a race car like this thing, you want a three-spoke chrome deal. Like, come on, let's admit it, right? Anyway, there's our front grille insert. And then the special Cobra Jet air cleaner, which is a stock-only piece. And again, I'm not really sure what these little guys are, but it's in the instructions can figure it out. And then finally we get this little bit here, which of course is the intake. Uh, there's those headlight things and the taillight covers, headlight covers, taillight covers for NASCAR and our deep dish wheel. Now remember the one in the back is flat in here and the wheel in the front would have the little peg. So right there. That, of course, is for your um, bearings for the front wheels. It's a bearing cap. So keep in mind, the ones without the cap are in the back. So again, very nice components here. Very well done for the vintage. Even the <laughs> big LTD style steering wheel that has no place in a race car is done well. Now we get into my favorite part of all these model kits, which of course is the chrome tree. And here we've got a beautiful chrome job on these components. We have our front grille here, which of course you add in a little bit of black wash in there and get nice. Black wash is Citadel Nuln Oil. <laughs> There's our stock wheels. And then these are more of the custom type wheels, which I've also seen these on race cars as well. The Ford back panel, which you need to paint black in here and then wipe the chrome off the top. There's our stock air cleaner with a little kind of ram airish kind of thing going on. There's our D 
dual carb high crazy intake manifold this of course would be for your custom the nascar style exhaust dumps which are interesting that they're chrome anyway there's our valve covers our alternator the carbs the air cleaner the cobra style custom one the sump pump for nascar and uh, all kinds of goodies so bringing this up to the camera you can see the nice detail in here very well executed just turn this over for a minute a couple of mold marks uh, maybe those aren't mold marks that might be purposely in there little pegs just to keep that the same distance there is a mold mark there though on the back of the license plate I think that should come off oh those are the velocity stacks there um, yeah overall though quite nice detail very well executed on these chrome parts yeah, see, it says 1969 in there. You can leave that in the license plate if you want, or scrape it off and put your decal in there. But overall, again, very nice parts on that chrome tree. Now we get into our clear components. And here, of course, we have our rear window. You can see how tall this thing is. Of course, it's that big because of the angle of the roof line. And here we get our front glass. And, you know, this is kind of interesting because... The typical 60s kits would have had this bridged as one big piece with uh, runners going in between. But in this kit, they're actually molded as two separate windows, which is quite nice. There's our taillights there as well, molded in red plastic. So this is pretty straightforward. And, well, the taillights are pretty straightforward. They're just flat. <laughs> But that's okay because that's how they were on the real car. When the rubber meets the road, Goodyear is there. And this model kit has all of our tires supplied, of course, by Goodyear. Right here we have our Goodyear Blue Streak Stock Car Special Racing Tire, which was, of course, a drag slick. These ones were used for NASCAR to give, of course, excellent traction. And over here, of course, we have our Polyglass GT L6015 Goodyear Tires. And these tires were special. They came out in 1967 and they were bias belted, which was a brand new concept because, as you may or may not know, bias ply tires, underneath the tread there are metal cords and the cords were set at a 45 degree angle on the bias ply tires. The bias ply tires were known to skid around and not have that great of traction. So, in 67, Goodyear decided they wanted to try to fix that, and they used some more metal cords that instead of going, well, they used the 45 degree angles underneath and on top, they used a 90 degree angle pattern of polyglass fiber treads, which stiffened up the cords underneath of the bias belts, and then, of course, gave you more grip on the highway. Now, these tires went from 67 to about 1982 when they finally got replaced by the modern radial tire. So, that's some neat stuff. <laughs> you get a nice chrome axle in here. And these polyglass tires have been in numerous kits going all the way back to 67, I do believe. You get that nice tread pattern on there. And the raised letters, so of course you can paint those white or just leave them black. Again, very nice. And, and these Goodyear's are of course big slicks. There is a seam line up the middle but you can get rid of that using your wheel spinning tool and of course a file and some sandpaper. These again have the big letters on there and the wing boot so you can easily paint them. Very nice tires on this kit. Here we have our decal sheet with these stripes that are reminiscent of the 90s Pro Street era. You get two types of orange, a little green and some blue going on here. The I Love Model Cars decal, the little decal that goes on top of the radiator support, then our Cobra Jet air cleaner, that decal there, and then we have some Texas license plates, 170 DEV. These are the kind of license plates I like in model kits because they're not saying 69 Cobra, you know, you can only use these on one kit. These, in fact, you can use all across on any models as long as you want a car from Texas. So just bring some of this up to the camera and see, of course, nice registry on these. So again, very nicely done. Uh, again, Pro Street 90s look. 
And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1969 Ford Torino Cobra. If you've built this model kit in the past, why not share it on our Facebook page? We'd love to see it. Check it out in the link below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing video, and I'm really curious on how you're going to build it. I'm really undecided. I need a few of these because there's so many different ways to do it. Now, like I was saying at the beginning of the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you want to see what model cars we have available down here at Monster Hobbies, don't forget to check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca and see all the cool things we got. We can ship around the world in all kinds of cool, cool things. So until next time, everybody, happy model building. <laughs>